1 Corinthians 11, 4 through 9, tells us David took the stronghold of Zion, that is the city of David. So you're sitting in the city of David, which later on uh, becomes known to us as Jerusalem. So it's Jerusalem of the Jebusites, Salem of Melchizedek, that's where we're sitting, uh, the stronghold of David or Zion. The reason I wanted you to think about this here is how important to us as Christians the Old Testament makes Jerusalem. Uh, we are amazingly a part of a very Jewish, very Jewish New Testament. Uh, we serve Jesus who is called the King of the Jews, right? Uh, we are members of a church founded by Jewish leaders and our highest authority is a Bible that was written by all Jewish people. Uh, God is Jewish because it says in John 4.22, salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of the Jews, our amazing Jewish heritage, John 4.22. And by the way, all of our benefits come from what's called the New Covenant. That's what we celebrate at communion, the New Covenant that covenant that was made with Israel, and we get to participate in it, as Romans 11 tells us. By the way, we're all, as believers, headed to a city that's called the new what? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Uh, that city has 12 gates named after 12 Jewish apostles. It has 12 foundation stones named after the 12 Jewish tribes of Israel. Have you ever thought how we're Jewish uh, influenced through and through? The Bible says that God sits on a hill called Zion. In fact, Jesus said the ultimate goal for all of us is to get to a banquet where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are seated with us. So truly, God has staked his name on Israel. Uh, four verses for you to write down, and I'll read to you. The first one is Ezekiel 5.5. God says that this city, Jerusalem, is the nerve center of the whole world. It says in Ezekiel 5.5, this is Jerusalem. I have set her in the midst of the nations. All the world is around her. It's almost like Jerusalem's the center of the world as far as God is concerned, Ezekiel 5.5. Secondly, in John 4.22, God says that Jerusalem is not only the focal point of the world, it's the salvation center of the world. Jesus said, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Salvation was, un, was, was unfurled or was displayed to us here in Jerusalem. It was here that Christ was presented as king. It's here that he was condemned, led like that sacrificial lamb. This is where he died in our place. Jerusalem is a salvation center. Uh, Zechariah 14, 1 and 2 says this, Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, and verse 2, I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. Right behind me is the Mount of Olives. Zechariah says that Jesus Christ's second coming, he descends right there where you see those towers on the Mount of Olives. Now, I preached this sermon, and it was captured by someone in audio form. It was put on the internet, and about Four or five months ago, I got an email from a guy at Lawrence Livermore Labs, you know, America's atomic facility. He said, uh, he said, I'm a Christian engineer. And he said, I heard you online. And he said, you said that some say that there's a possible fault line through the Mount of Olives. He said, well, before I worked for Livermore, he said, I worked for Aramco. And he says, we, right after the 67 war, did soundings for, they asked him to do geologic soundings to look for oil. Uh, structures that, that they could drill for, and he says one of the main things, and, he, and he, he actually attached a PDF of the geologic survey of the Mount of Olives, and you should see it. It's just like this line right through the middle. He said there is a fault line right through the middle of that Mount of Olives. He said, isn't it coincidental that what Zacharias said long before they knew about fault lines, that that, that mountain behind me would split open, and it says in Zechariah 14, that as Jesus is descending and his feet touch the Mount of Olives, 
that it splits open and that marks the ending of the tribulation time. So where we're sitting and looking at the Mount of Olives is the storm center of the world prophetically. All the nations, verse 2 says of Zechariah 14, all the nations will battle against Jerusalem. On the side of uh, the Mount of Olives there, there's a little cave. It's, it's called the Cave of the Prophets, and, and there's tombs in there. And I always think about Zechariah. When he looked at Jerusalem, it was all burned and destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. And as he looked at it, he was writing these words. It's one of those times he must have scratched his head and said, Well, Lord, you said it. I guess I believe it. Because Jerusalem is off the beaten path. There's really no easy way to get here. It's not Rome. It's not Paris. It's not, you know, some great city on the coast that's easy to get to. But all the nations of the earth, prophetically, are going to come to fight here. Finally, Isaiah 2, the good news is, it says this, Isaiah 2, 1. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills of Jerusalem and all nations will flow into it. This is going to become, Isaiah 2 says, the center of the glory of God to all the nations in the millennium. And we're sitting here as those who serve the King of the Jews, headed to the heavenly Jerusalem, uh, knowing that uh, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and we're looking forward to a city that has 12 gates, 12 Jewish apostles, and 12 foundations, those 12 tribes. I'm just so thankful that for one moment in our life, we can be in the very center of the universe as far as God's concerned when you're in Jerusalem. Father, I thank you for your word telling us how strategic the city is to you. May we realize that your eye is on Jerusalem. This is your land. You love this place. It's beautiful to you. And though right now it's in turmoil, we know that everything will end and begin right here. Thanks for letting us come. Open our eyes to your word. Thank you for our great Jewish heritage. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.